Hi, I'm John, and today I'm going to demonstrate how to sample vegetative cover using the point intercept method. Before we begin, let's define cover. Cover is generally referred to as the percentage of the ground surface covered by vegetation. More specifically, it is the vertical projection of vegetation from the ground as viewed from above. You can think of it as a bird's eye view of the vegetation. Cover is an important vegetation and hydrologic characteristic. It is mainly used to determine the contribution of each species to a plant community. High cover also indicates more biomass on a site, which can mean more available forage and more wildlife habitat on a site. High cover also means less rain hitting the soil and less erosion. Cover is one of the most common measures of community composition because it is applicable to many types of, of plant species and biomes, is expressed as a percentage and easily visualized and intuitive, and equalizes the contributions of both small but abundant species as well as large but sparse species. There are two types of cover we're concerned with. Aerial cover, which is the vegetation covering the ground surface as seen from above, and basal cover, which is the area where the plant is rooted to the soil. Well, there are a variety of ways to sample cover. I like the point intercept method. It's very easy to perform, and it doesn't require making a subjective estimate of cover. Estimating cover with the point intercept method basically involves tallying the number of times your point hits a, a target species out of the total number of points you sample along a transect. The method is easy and can be done very fast because you only need to decide whether your sampled point intersects your target species or not. The method also requires very little equipment. The main equipment you'll need is a metric tape measure, a point rod or laser pointer, some stakes, a hammer, a clipboard, data sheet, and a pencil or pen. While you can sample completely random points spread throughout your study area, the best approach is to arrange your sample points along transects and consider transects as your, your sampling unit. The number of points you sample along a transect determines the resolution of your cover estimate. For example, if you sample only 10 points along a transect, only cover estimates of 10%, 20%, 30%, etc. are possible. But if you sample 50 points, you can obtain cover estimates of 2%, 4%, 6%, etc. You want enough points so that you encounter at least a few individuals of your species of interest along each transect. Generally, this is 50 to 100 points per transect. Before you start sampling, you need to figure out where you're going to establish your random locations on your site. Mainly, this is going to be determined by how large your site is and how homogeneous your site is. For large sites, you'll want to establish random locations before going into the field to ensure that your sample locations cover the full extent of your site. The best way to do this is to use a GIS system to create random points. Then you'll load those points into a GPS and set up a route to navigate to each point when you're in the field. For small sites, you can use a random number table in the field. My table has random numbers from 1 through 12. You pick any row and you read the first three numbers on that row. Let's pretend we're on a clock face. We need to determine where we want 12 o'clock to be. It doesn't matter where 12 o'clock is, just as long as you're consistent. I'll use this mountain peak in the background as 12 o'clock, but you could also use magnetic north on your compass. The first number I pick determines which direction on the clock we should walk. Our first number is 2, so we'll walk towards 2 o'clock. The second number determines how far we should walk. Our second number is 8, so we'll walk 8 steps towards 2 o'clock. It doesn't matter whether you use meters, steps, or paces, just be consistent. Finally, the third number determines which direction to run our transect. Our third number was 11, so we'll run our transect towards 11 o'clock. Now that we have a random location and a random direction, let's lay out our transect. Be sure to bring a clip to secure your tape to the stake. If you tie your tape around the stake, it will eventually break off and you'll be buying a new tape measure. Here, we'll sample along a 10 meter transect. We'll sample a point every 10 centimeters, roughly 7 inches, so we'll sample a total of 100 points along each transect. It's important to keep your transect tapes straight and tight. It should not move around too much while you're sampling, or this can bias your results. If plants are in the way, just go over them or through them to keep the line as straight as possible. Before we begin to sample, let's discuss our data sheet. How you record your point intercept data depends on what you're specifically sampling. 
If your sampling covered for only one species, you can simply tally the number of times your point hits that species. If your sampling cover for multiple species, you'll want to tally the number of times your point hits each species. For absolute cover, you'll also want to tally the number of times your point hits bare ground. Since we're sampling points along transects, we also need to ensure we're tallying our target species by transect. So in our case, I've created a data sheet that looks like this. Our first column is for holding hits to bare ground, and the codes or names of our target species go here. Then we'll record the total hits on bare ground in our first cell, and the hits to each target species in the following cells. Okay, now we're ready to sample. Starting at the beginning of our tape, we'll pick a point every 10 centimeters. Using our rod, we'll drop a vertical point along the side of our tape every 10 centimeters. We'll be sure to consistently use the same side of the tape for each sample. We'll identify the first species our point intersects. If our point does not intersect a plant species and hits bare ground, we'll tabulate that it hit bare ground. And we'll record a tick mark on our data sheet for each hit on each target species or on bare ground. Then we'll move to the next 10 centimeter increment and sample another point. And we'll repeat every 10 centimeters until we reach the end of our transect tape. Well that's it. When you're finished with your transect, collect your tape, your point rod, and your stakes, and get ready to move on to your next location. One more housekeeping item. Be sure to record the locations of your stakes with your GPS. If you obtain random starting points in your GPS, move to the next point in your GPS to set up your next transect. If you establish random locations in the field, pick a new row on your table of random numbers and use the same method we discussed earlier to move to your next location. When you're done with all your transects and you've returned to your office, calculating percent cover is fairly simple in Excel. Enter your data into Excel as you collected it, and then add columns for computing the total number of points, which is the sum of all hits along each transect. Also add columns for computing the percent cover per species along each transect. This is the total number of hits per species divided by the total number of points per transect. When you've done this for all species, for all transects, you can then compute the average percentage for cover for each species for all transects on your site. Do the same to compute the standard deviation and then you have the ingredients to create a graph. Well that's it! I hope you found this video helpful. Now get out there and sample some cover in your area.